Lynn Arison has made her indelible mark on the arts world as founder of the New World Symphony and Young Arts, a program of the National Foundation for Advancement in the Arts. She pioneered these projects with her late husband and founder of Carnival Cruise Lines, Ted Arison. Arison now continues her artistic pursuit with her newly developed talent as author. I did journalism as a natural thing, and when I told my journalist friends, well, I should really study this, they said, no, no, oh, don't, don't study it. It's natural and you do it well. But when I decided that I was going to write a book, I needed to find out how to transition from being a journalist to being an author. Arison's book called Travels with Van Gogh and the Impressionists, Discovering the Connections, centers on her journey through France to deeply understand the lives of the Impressionist painters. She traveled for one month to the homes and villages where Van Gogh, Degas, Renoir, and other master artists worked and lived. I thought I was going to write about beauty, and uh, I thought that the story was going to be just lovely, because the paintings were just lovely. The surprise was that it was not lovely. Their life was not at all lovely. It was, it was uh, rejection. It was lo being looked at as if they were really weird and strange. And, um, and I, I wrote about it because that was the truth. Lynn Arison was not alone in her travels through France. Her granddaughter, Sarah, who was 15 at the time, joined her. At that time, I had no interest and no connection to the arts at all. Um, I was planning on being pre-med. I was the very traditional high school student. And with this trip, I kind of began to understand artists more and what they go through and where they're coming from. When we visited um, Van Gogh's, um, his final resting place in auvers sur oise I saw how he lived. I realized that for him it wasn't a choice to be an artist, that there was something inside that he had to put out into the world. And he had no choice, you know, he had to buy paints and canvases and paintbrushes, and his priority was getting his work out. By happenstance, we stumbled on Van Gogh's um, chamber where he died. It was such a small, squalid, sad room with just one window in the ceiling. It was a garret room. And here people were buying these paintings for $82 million. I mean, that was something that she just was so struck by the, the sadness of it all. So, um, I mean, all of these things came together. It transformed both, both of us. Neil Folberg, who was a distinguished photographer, also participated in this trip back in time to experience the lives of the Impressionist artists. His mission became to bridge the past with the present. They decided to go back and put it back into their painterly concepts and visions and make photographs of modern France that reflected each of the uh, painter's viewpoints and interests. And that's what I decided to do. That was the concept behind it. That's a fairly tall order because I had eight of the greatest masters of art that had ever lived. And I was going to try and bring their vision back into, into a modern world. But I did it with modern tools and I did it using real people of this era. This journey to know and connect with the Impressionist artists also became the way to heal Lynn Arison's life. She had been in deep mourning from the recent death of her husband. The transformation was a very slow process because my life was gray. I felt sad, I was hopeless. It was as if I had lost my whole life. And I, had, I knew that I was going to have to create another one. And then eventually, because I was looking at so much art, I was reading their stories, um, what they went through, how they felt about things. Uh, slowly but surely, the colors came back to my own life. Both Lynn and Sarah have recreated their lives as a result of this moving and meaningful trip through France. Lynn has since renewed her commitment to supporting young, supremely talented artists through her Young Arts Project. Sarah now heads the Arison Arts Foundation, working towards raising awareness of artists. Soon after this trip, I went to my first NFA event, and I had a mother of one of the uh, visual artists come up to me, and she said, you know, I really want to thank you and your family for everything that you're doing, 
When my son used to sit on the floor and draw instead of doing his math homework, I would yell at him and go tell him to do his real work. And it's after being here and seeing these incredible master teachers and these, the incredible artists that he's surrounded by that I realized that his art is his real work. It was a very rich, very, very beautiful life. And that was gone. That was gone. But I had to find a way to bring the colors back, to bring the richness of, of uh, a delicious life. And, and I, I did.